Well, hey, thanks for joining me again for another episode of Understanding the Next Gen. I'm Jeff Baxter. I'm the Next Gen Pastor at Mission Hills Church here in Littleton, Colorado. And today I want to talk about what's going on in the world of adolescence. But it might not be what you think it is. So let's go back in time and let me set this up for us. In the 1950s, everyone shared the same story, the same values, same entertainment, dress, music, movies. In the 1950s, everybody was in the same cultural area. In the mid-1960s, as the youth culture picked up steam, the Vietnam War hit, British invasions, JFK was assassinated, it became this ditch that the next generation was starting to dig. This belonged to them. You get to the 1970s and 80s when I was growing up and hit high school and graduated in 1990, but in 1970s, 1980s, things were changing very, very fast. The definition of what was cool, what was rad, what was awesome, uh, was, was changing. There, there was this one teacher that thought they were really, really cool, but all the students thought they were the biggest idiot ever. That was back in the 1980s. So we started to see this, this dip, this hole start to form between youth and adults. Trust was starting to crack and break. Adults were being pushed away by youth because they wanted their own space and their own place to hang out. This is when youth ministry started to pop up in the 60s and the 70s when we started to see that adults didn't really want to hang out with the next generation, so they pushed them down the hallway to go do their own thing to keep them out of the way. So this bridge began to start to cover over, began to stop trusting adults. Adults have this agenda for them, and so they perceived that adults didn't like them very much, or they liked them when they competed and performed for them under adult expectations. So they, so they didn't trust adults. Remember, they're not going to tell you that. The only reason we know that is because of some focus groups and some time. A lot of youth pastors and teachers and researchers have spent time with the next generation getting parental permission to do so. And this is what's being reported back. So high school is not this safe, uplifting time. We might have used to say, those of us who are a little bit older, like high school was the best time of my life. But if you said that to an adolescent today, they would think, really, this is as good as it gets? It feels like everybody has an agenda for me. It feels like this pressure's put on me to perform and compete. High school really feels like a penitentiary where coaches and teachers all have these agendas for me. There are conditions attached to the relationships today. They don't just love me or care for me because of me, an adolescent believes. Remember, their perception is reality. So if they perceive that they, there's an agenda on them, they have to compete, get a certain grade, do a certain, do, do well in a, in a certain uh, athletic event or competition. So high schoolers have figured out how to be with one another for self-protection. Hey, I've got your back. That's where friendships are formed. And then you add this other layer, this other bridge over the top of the digital world that social media has become this subset culture of the underground world for adolescents where they escape to places, go places that adults can't get to. It has its own language and culture. So what do we do about this? Well, how, here, here's an action step for you. How do we respond to this underground world that adolescents are living in? Well, first, test this theory out. Test it out, see if it's true, watch, listen, see, do, do, does the next generation, do adolescents want to hang out with adults or would they rather be in their bedrooms on their own with their friends? See, that's changed. It didn't used to be that way in the 50s and 60s. It was different. Today is very different. The distance between adolescents and adults is getting wider and they're going into an underground world where they don't want to really interact with adults. But they have to because of these agendas that adults have on them. See how adolescents feel today. Second thing you can do is, is be available, be ready. When an adolescent's ready to talk and to open up and to talk about their world, uh, you better be ready because, again, their perception is reality. If they perceived you're not available for them or you have an agenda for them, they're not going to talk to you. They're not going to open up. 
they'll stop coming out of the underground world to be with adults. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to Understand the Next Gen with me.